name is Jasper Kutsia. I'm the founder of Amtech and the principal of the Terra Technica Asset Management College. We develop people in asset management and in maintenance. I have a PhD in industrial engineering and I'm a fellow of the International Society for Engineering Asset Management. I've written hundreds of publications, including two internationally used textbooks, which you see a picture of there. We assist maintenance people to become the best that they can be in their careers. Our vision is that each asset management business flourish and each maintainer grow into an expert. This is the type of equipment that this conference is about. Of course, a little bit more sophisticated. Now, it does not matter whether one operates aeroplanes or spacecraft or industrial production plants or mining machinery or whatever. The fact is that these assets must be purchased, maintained and disposed of. This we, we call physical asset management or just asset management. And this is what we are talking about here in this uh, presentation. Right, so the seven assets of asset management. When I wrote my first textbook in the field, simply called Maintenance, in 1997, I had to start by looking at what the contributing factors to maintenance success are. And I listed them in the first chapter of the book. These have now evolved into what I now call the seven assets of asset management. So in order to fulfill this function, the asset management function needs to be excellent in seven main areas, which we call the seven assets of the function. If these seven assets are in place, the function can perform well. So we ask the question seven assets then. Uh, the first asset is asset management skills. People having adequate asset management skills. That's the first asset. In other words, the business must have people with sufficient asset management skills. The second asset is equipping the business with appropriate technology the necessary technology must be in place to be able to maintain and to manage the assets. Thirdly, one must have excellent maintenance systems. Four, the business should run like clockwork. Fifth, optimizing the life cycle cost of operating the equipment. Sixth, having effective and efficient business processes. The seventh, good personnel selection practice. The first letters of the names of the seven assets of asset management spell the word develop. Lastly, all of these assets are pitched towards ensuring that the business's equipment is well maintained. That's why the equipment is at the center of the, of the diagram with the seven assets in it and the develop at the top looking like that. Now the question is, will these seven assets on their own cut it? Will they do the job? No, the answer is simply no. You can have them at their best level. And if you do not have life in the organization, 
they will just be exhibition objects. In other words, they need to be there, but they, they, they by their own will not do it. But also, if you have life in the business, and these seven assets are not properly developed, you will likewise not have success. So you need the seven assets plus life-giving processes to effectuate them. Now let, let us look at this. We start with the first asset then, the D of the acronym DEVELOP, the development of asset management skills. You see the orange circle there. Meeting the basic educational requirements for a position does not say that you can do the work. It only provides the basic foundation to be able to do the work at all. So the employee needs additional development. This involves the following developmental aspects. Firstly, the technical work that the person has to do or supervise or manage. Secondly, specific work of the maintenance position, like for instance, maintenance planning or maintenance engineering or whatever. Thirdly, general maintenance principles. And fourthly, maintenance techniques. And also general areas such as the following non-comprehensive list. Leadership, generic management principles and techniques, personal management, and so on and so on. There are many of them. The second asset is named equipping the business. That's now the E in the develop. There are a vast array of technology involved in the performance of maintenance. A complete listing is not possible, but it includes the following classes of equipment. Cleaning equipment, general instrumentation, general engineering machines, specialized tooling, and lots of others. And then the systems employed in the business to make the results more vi visible and planned, that, thus the V in develop. This involves the computerized maintenance management system, that's the CMMS, and all the systems surrounding it. The CMMS plays a central role in the business to administer and link the activities taking place in the business. However, the CMMS will only be an important contributor to success if the following is true. If, if all the other six of the seven assets are sufficiently in place to make the CMMS effective, and also that the CMMS itself must be deployed well. The fourth asset is engineered logistics. The statement on the slide saying that each minute lost is forever gone uses an analogy from Formula One racing. It says that the racing organization's actions needs to be f need to be faultless. First of all, the facilities needed to support the driver must be ready. Always be ready for the event. Second, further to this, the crew should be fast, efficient, and effective. And if that, th these two things are not there, the chances of success are poor. Now, industrial maintenance needs to be well organized in likewise fashion. Thing is, nothing must be left to chance if you really want to be a winner. The flow of people, work, and information must be based on careful thought. This should further precision task performance and short turnaround times. And then number five, life cycle management. That's the L of develop. 
there are two things that need to be in place for proper life cycle management of equipment. Firstly, a scientifically designed maintenance plan. The maintenance of the equipment must be based on the best information available regarding the equipment and its failure. The second component of the life cycle management concerns life cycle modeling, cost modeling. That is the information regarding the operational costs and the failure history needs to be combined to optimize the life cycle cost of the equipment and replacing the equipment at such a time that it serves the need of the business best. The sixth asset comprises being organized or so systemized. Asset management or maintenance needs to be systemized on two levels, namely the strategic level and the tactical level. The first or strategic level then concerns what the organization needs to achieve for success in terms of maintenance, in terms of asset management. While the second or tactical level concerns the actual operations that are required for successful performance of the required maintenance actions. These include planning, execution, supervision, etc., etc., etc. The seventh and last asset is proficiency of personnel. The business needs to achieve a deep level of maintenance expertise. That is at all levels of maintenance operations and management. So each level must have the knowledge that is necessary at that level to support the whole process. The organization must have the right expertise regarding the task and technology level at each level of the business. There are many functions involved in the maintenance business, each needing certain education and training requirements. So what about all of this? Can an asset management or maintenance leader simply apply themselves to these seven areas, get the money for improving them, and then the problem is solved? We started by saying that the seven assets by themselves is not really it. So will the business perform a lot better by just doing this? Now, unfortunately, it's not as simple as this. Although these seven assets are critical to success, the total action must be bound together. And the main binding force is the organizational culture of the asset management or the maintenance function. The culture is an essential part of success. In any business, it is the will of the people to succeed that brings the favorable outcome. And so it is in the maintenance world. It's not that the seven assets are not important. They are very important. But even to develop them to a winning level, needs, it needs the commitment, the drive, and the enthusiasm of the business's people. In the end, that is the formula for success. In this figure, we then show how important culture is to achieving success. Culture now replaces equipment in the center of our model. And that makes sense. Whereas the seven assets operate inwards on the equipment of the organization, the culture is the central force that drives the organizational outcomes, including building up the seven assets. So how do you bring this about? This is the million dollar question. There are a few critical components that need to be addressed. Firstly, the knowledge and the skills that the seven asset program gives. Secondly, the processes that the program provides, and that uh, includes a phased approach. One cannot achieve all this in one fell swoop. It is just not possible. Second, an integrated approach. There are a big number of quantities and 
qualities that need to be addressed in the business. These cannot be done, or this cannot be done too fast. It needs to accommodate the pace of change that the workforce will allow. You are to, you're talking about people. You must change people, and to change people takes time. Also, the main components addressed in the program, apart from the seven assets themselves, are as follows. We list four of them. First, regular instances of measurement of the progress made, so that you can decide how to adapt uh, your, 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 situ your, your uh, approach. Second, where the, ac where the accent of the technical focus of the maintenance of the business is placed. You grow from basic care to condition-based maintenance to proactive maintenance. Third, where the accent of the management of the maintenance of the business is placed. You grow from managing single important failures to managing the business plan to managing strategically, focusing on excellence. Fourth, building the culture from where it was to a team culture, to a culture where teams are aligned from top to bottom. That means that the top man and the bottom man must, must function in the same team. But the top man must know that the bottom man has, an, has, has a, a, a big uh, a part to play. And the bottom man must believe that the top man is in line with what, what he wants to achieve. So that, that we call a winning culture. There is our contact detail uh, on the uh, uh, web, amtech.co.za forward slash seven assets. There's more information on, on, the, on the seven assets and email us at seven assets at amtech.co.za. Uh, and I'll come back to that slide just now. So I want to thank you Thank you for listening to me. I hope that this has been worthwhile to you. I'm taking it back to the previous slide. In case you want those details. Any questions? Thank you for your insightful presentation, Dr. Jasper. Um, now the session is open for questions. I assume there are no questions from speakers. Thank you once again for your presentation and hope to see you in our future conferences. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me.